Hello class, today we're going to go over chapter 21. We're going to talk about stacks and queues. So today we're going to talk about what is a stack, what is a queue, how do we implement that in a programming language, and what kind of applications where would we want to use a stack, what kind of applications would we want to use a queue. Let's talk about what they are now. First, first a queue. A queue is really just a line, and I think we're all used to lining up for things. You go to uh, McDonald's and you stand in line. Um, you get in line at the end of the line, and then the first person at the front of the line is the first person who gets serviced, right? So you can imagine that you have an add kind of method where you add something to the very end, and a remove where you remove from the very front of the line. We call that a first in, first out, because the first person who got in the line is going to be the first person who gets serviced. A stack, on the other hand, is a LIFO. The last in is the first out. And in this case, it's, it's literally a stack. I think of it as a stack of dishes. You know, you, you wash a, a dish and you put it onto a stack, and then you put the next one on, you put the next one on. And so the first dish that you take off is the last one that had just been put onto the stack. We use words like pushing for putting onto a stack and popping for taking off of a stack. What are stacks good for? Stacks are very useful for nested structures like, like directories. If we want to traverse all the directories in a file system, Stacks are very good ways of remembering where you were and how to get back to where you want to start from. Um, it's also good for trees, we'll see, as well as um, Java even uses it when it wants to uh, track method calls. For example, you know, you might, um, you know, be calling method A, and then method A, within method A, it calls method B, and then from method B, it calls method C, and so on and so forth. When you're done with method C, you want to remove it from the stack and then return back to method B. When you're done with method B, you want to remove that from the stack and go to method A. So stacks are very useful in kind of tracking where you are in a program and where to return back to. How would we implement an array? Um, there's a couple ways you can implement that. It's, it's kind of up to you in some ways. Um, one way is with an array. And so we have this stack pointer that would point to the next empty element in an array. And so when we want to push onto the array, we add the element at that point. And we can see that right here. When we want to push object X, we put that object at that spot in the array, and then we increment our stack pointer to point to the next empty slot. Whenever we want to pop, and again, popping is taking off the element, we decrement the stack pointer and then return the object at that certain position. This would be a actual Java implementation using an array list, as you see here. Um, we have an array stack. It is a um, array list of whatever kind of object we want to hold. And you can see here the various um, um, methods we want to have. We have a push where we just simply add on to the uh, array list. And then we pop by removing the last item at the end. So, fairly simple uh, method. In, in this case, you notice that we don't really have to have, um, at least in, in this case with an array list, um, we don't have to even know about the notion of a stack pointer per se. Um, that's kind of done within the implementation of the array list. We're adding to the very end of the array list right here. And then when we pop it, what we do is, we access it, we say, get me the last item in the array list and remove it. 
Now, there's also a peak operation, a peak method. And what peak does is it returns the item at the top of the stack without actually removing it. So you can see that here that it's implemented using the get method instead of the remove. Now, you could also implement the a, a, a stack using a linked list. Um, you can see here that when we push an item onto the stack, we can put it at the very first location of our linked list. And then when we pop the object, we can remove the first item from the list. And that when we peek it, we can get the first item without actually removing it. So you can see in both cases, you could implement a stack using either a linked list or an array list. How does Java actually decide to do it? Um, oh, before we get to that, um, let's talk about some properties about stacks. Now, the major operations of a stack is pushing, putting something onto, popping, taking it off, and peeking, seeing what the top of the stack has. Ideally, you want all of these to operate in O1 time. You don't want this to be a, a expensive operation because these are frequently used operations. Now, when we implement this in Java, we're actually um, holding references to the objects. And we need to be careful about this. Actually, I'll warn you that when we get to our, our tests and whatnot, um, sometimes you have to be very careful that if you were to change and modify the top item of your stack, if that object reference is identical to other references below, you could accidentally change other objects as well. So for example, suppose we have a stack here. And the way I'll show this is just by having arrows here. And maybe I have multiple entries of my stack that reference the same object. So if I take this object off and do something with it, and in doing something with it, I've changed the value of this object, then that means that this item in the stack and this item in the stack will also kind of see that same change. So you have to be careful. Um, um, maybe that's okay, but it's it's more like you just have to be careful when you're you're dealing with this idea that you're holding references to objects in your stack. Now Java actually has a stack class. It's part of the collections framework. And actually, let me show you that in in this picture over here. You actually see that there's a stack class down here. And it's implemented, strangely enough, not using the linked list. You know, it, we know that a stack can be implemented with a linked list. We know that a stack can be implemented as an array list. But actually, Java does neither. Java actually implements it based upon what's called a vector class in the in Java. And it's actually very similar to an array list. So uh, you could think of it as an array list, um, but technically it's not. Um, anyways, the key methods that you will be using if you implement a stack is, is it empty? Pushing an item onto the stack, popping an element from the stack, and peeking at the top element. Um, now, there are other methods, but we'll just not uh, kind of get into that. A real useful kind of example of using a stack is when you kind of want to parse through a, 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 a phrase that has matching brackets, you know. So you type in some uh, command in Java or whatnot, and you have these matching brackets, and how do you parse through them? So you can imagine going from left to right, and just let's suppose I have some stuff here. I'll just make something up. Like that. Okay. And so I'm just going to iterate through this line here. 
and then I go from A to B to C, and then at this position, I see a, a left bracket. And what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to push the position of this onto the stack, and this is at position 3, so we'll put a 3 down here. And then we go to position 4, position 5, position 6, and then we hit another right bracket. And again, just like the code says right here, we're going to push that position onto the stack. And so this is, let's see, 4, 5, 6, 7. And then we go to position 8, position 9, position 10, and we see the right bracket. And what that says is, if we see a right bracket um, and the stack is not empty, then we're going to pop the 7 from the stack, so this will get popped. And then we're going to print out the starting position followed by the position of the right bracket. So we're going to print out something like this, 7, 2, 10. And so this is position 10, then we go to 11, 12, 13. And then again we see another right bracket, and what we'll do is we'll pop from our stack, and our stack has the value 3, so we'll pop it, and then we'll print out 3 through 13. And so 7 and 10 kind of references this, and then 3 and 13 are the outer brackets here. So you can see that um, stacks are very nice for this kind of application of matching brackets. Another example, and I won't go into the details of this, um, is in traversing a tree. And we haven't really talked a lot about, you know, trees yet, so it's kind of getting a little ahead of ourselves. But just know that um, we're going to see different ways of traversing a tree, and later on we're going to actually see how we can uh, traverse a tree recursively. Um, but if you want to, you can traverse a tree, and, and traversing means visit every single node of a tree. You could visit every single node of a tree without recursion by use of a stack. And so the idea here is we're going to go down the left-hand side, and then we're going to pop whatever is on the right, or sorry, we're going to go down the left-hand side, and we're going to push whatever is on the right-hand side onto the stack so that when we're done with everything on the left, we could start popping back out um, of, of the tree, getting whatever was on the right side. So I'm not going to go into the details of this, um, but this is a very nice way. Just know that stacks can be used to traverse a tree through a loop instead of through recursion. Now let's talk about queues. Queues are, are useful when you want to process things in order, right? You go to a store, you get in line. First person in line is the first person served. If you have a bunch of print jobs, you would like it to be done in order. If you're typing onto the keyboard, the first letter you press is the letter you want to appear on the screen. Same with mouse clicks. One way to implement a queue is with a ring buffer. And so you have this buffer of memory. You can think of it as an array of memory. Um, and you have a front and you have a back. So when you get in line, you add things to the back of the line. When you service things, when you take things out of the queue, you take it from the front of the line, okay? So in this case, we could see that we have a queue of items, the front of the line, the rear of the line. If we service or take out from the line the one and the one, it's taken out of the front, and we could see how that disappears. And then we added some additional entries, 21, 34, and 55, and they get added to the end of, or the rear of our line, our queue. And you can see here, as it's implemented as a ring buffer, when we get to the end of the actual array of memory, 
we actually wrap around and put it at position zero. Now, again, when we implement this, we want it to be efficient. The common uh, methods are adding to the end of the line, removing from the beginning of the line, and peeking to see what is at the front of the line without removing it. And we want all of these ideally to be run in O1 time. Again, just like stacks, the queue will be actually holding a, 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 all the references to the objects and not necessarily the objects themselves. So again, as with stacks, be careful with that idea. So in Java, there is a queue interface, and we have the is empty, the add, the remove, and the peak. And again, just to reference the picture of it, we could see that um, the linked list class implements the queue interface. So in Java, if we want to implement a queue, we can instantiate a linked list. And so this is an example that demonstrates that. We see right here, um, we're instantiating a linked list and we're um, creating a variable, a queue of strings. So we're gonna access it using the uh, queue interfaces. And suppose we have a whole bunch of lines and we wanna see, or we wanna save all the lines that have a particular word in it. So down here, if this line has this target string in it, we want to save that line and add it to our queue. And so what we're doing is, you can see here, every single line in order that has a particular string gets added to our queue. And then later on, we want to process them in the order uh, that it came. And so you could say, while the queue is not empty, just remove that item from the queue. So first in, first out. Okay, so as a review, I'm just gonna kind of go over these. What are two main operations for a stack? We have the push and the pop. Name a few applications of a stack. Nested directories, traversing trees. Name four methods of the stack class. Of course, the push and the pop but then also is empty and peak. What are two, two main operations of a queue? Adding, adding to the end of the line and removing from the front of the line. Name a few applications. Processing events in order, say a print job. Um, name four methods of the queue interface. We have the add, we have the remove. We also have is empty and peak. And you notice that is empty and peak are exactly the same as the ones from the stack. Explain why a stack of objects can be equally efficiently implemented using an array list or a linked list. Um, either of the peak and the pops will only take O1 of time with either an array list or a linked list. This is an important question. I want you to think about this one. Why is an array list not an efficient uh, uh, data structure for a queue? So you notice over here, a linked list here implements the queue interface, but an array list does not. Why is that? The answer is because if we want to remove or add at the beginning of the array, that operation takes O n time, whereas a linked list, O1. Okay, anyways, that's it for today. Have a good day, everybody.